we have seen or heard them on stage. Sublime in performance. What goes on in their minds? What lies behind the choices they make? The paths they choose? Here is a glimpse into an artist's mind. An exploration of an artist's journey, both in art and in life, with a treasury of insights. It is about who they become as they evolve into artists, their transformation through the struggles in that journey. Discover the human behind the artist. Talent that touches the onlooker's heart is art. Art brings hearts together. I was born in Malaysia, well then it was called Malaya, which was a war-torn country with the Japanese occupation. Uh, it was a hard time then for my parents and my people. My grandfather had, uh, you know, he is the one who shifted to uh, Malaya and my mother was born there in fact. So the whole family, everybody, my uncles, I had six uncles. And so the, all of them were, uh, it was a big family. I still remember when I was about three or four, then my parents used to take me to see Tamil movies those days. I would just naturally stand up when there was someone like Kumari Kamala or somebody dancing and showed interest and listening to the radio and trying to repeat the songs and doing my own dance. So seeing that uh, when I was about five or six years old, they decided to send me to um, Kerala to my grandparents who were already there you know after retiring from Malaya they went and settled there and also to learn uh, Malayalam and you know go to school because uh, those days we didn't have good schools in Malaya so I was sent that's how my uh, early uh, schooling and dancing everything would started when I s was doing this for some time Someone in the family suggested uh, that I should uh, be sent to some specialized institution to further my interest. So someone suggested send her to Shantini Ketan. Then someone said, my God, sending her, she is such a small thing. She is only six, seven years old. How can you send her to Shantini Ketan all the way? Then someone else said, no, there is Kalakshetra in uh, Madras then. That's how I landed in the... Uh, Kalakshetra. It was also um, very easy that way because my brother and sister were uh, admitted here in, in the college. My sister was in Queen Mary's and my brother was in Christian College. So they were slightly older to me. So, so I had uh, two of them to take care of me and I had an uncle who was in the police department here. So Cushy. I had everyone with me to take care of me and uh, in 1952 I moved to Kalakshetra. That's, that's the starting of my journey. I was born in a very remote village in the North Malabar those days. It's the Madras Presidency, North Kerala, a village called Payyanur. So it's very famous for Jyotisham, uh, martial arts and Ayurveda and also uh, historically a freedom fighters village. We are, I am one of the eight children in, uh, for my father. 
So, I had the third one. Acting was there because father already uh, been training a lot of. So, from the age of four, I have been acting on the stage as little Bala Gopalam, the Krishna, Santana Gopalam, like that. And my brother used to do Krishna's role and all this. So, we have a big family. So, it is all consisting of family members, uh, drama troupe traveling and uh, and uh, appa used to teach us bhajans so i could deliver uh, dialogues in the drama long dialogues <laughs> i can deliver in that the four and the six and all that that's how my background is that then uh, at the age of 13 it so happened my father met guru chandu in a uh, train in a train and then father said, I have eight children, why don't you take one to Galakshatra? <laughs> that is how Asan said, I can't just take like that. Amma has asked me to send, uh, select one, but I have already selected that, and but I can't uh, help. But and I will come and see your uh, children. So, um, he came and uh, the four boys were lined up and I, I, he asked, you pick up any one of them. But uh, <laughs> fortunately for me, correct. He picked me up because I am the middle, 13 years. And along with me, I met my close friend Balagopal, who was already selected by Rukmini Devi, and we, we travelled in the train, first train journey. First time I am getting onto the train and landed in Madras. First time I am seeing a sea also. So, landed in, in, in Adyar Theosophical Society exactly like my village. Thought it is going to be a big town, but landed up in an ashram like at atmosphere in Theosophical Society, Adayar. It was like um, from the Payinur village to Adayar village. The first day itself, as soon as we landed, that was October 5th, 1953. That is the day I remember. Asan took us to um, see Rugmini Devi. Because um, the same morning after our morning ablutions and all that, we walked through Theosophical Gardens and as we uh, went along, first Asan called out to some girls who were play, playing in the, that was the Dasra holidays, playing in the Theosophical Gardens. And he called out to a girl called Shanta Yudeva. And uh, Shanta with all that her coyness and little girl, eight year girl, very shyly and looking at two strange boys. <laughs> two, uh, she came and then uh, came to us. Hasan then said, Shanta, these two brats from the village don't know any Tamil, nothing. So, you must take care of them. So, she just nodded and said and uh, just went away that is uh, he asan said you take care of them he took care of me from that day the first girl i met in kalakshetra like sri rama meeting um, sita in the ayodhya uh, in the mithila gardens okay then uh, asan took us to rukmini devi and when rukmini devi saw us coming that is asan and the two boys Rukmini Devi saw from a distance and she shouted at Apunni, that is Jankaramano, her assistant director. Apunni, look here, who is coming? Rama Lakshmana and Vishwamitra. So, that was the time she was contemplating and thinking about the Sita Swamparana production. So, immediately next sentence Rukmini Devi immediately said, Ashan, I told you to bring only one boy, why did you bring two boys? <laughs> that, then Asan did not know what to how to. Asan then said, uh, 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 I couldn't resist taking this boy. If you don't want him, I will send him back. <laughs> um, then Sankarmanan said, um, said, no, 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 wait. Uh, anyway, you said Rama and Lakshmana. Let, 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 let them be Rama and Lakshmana in your production. That is the, so we became Rama and Lakshmana. That is the story of <laughs> entering the Kalakshetra portals in Adyar Theosophical Gardens.
Kalakshetra was in the Theosophical Gardens that time. It was a different atmosphere. Of course, as uh, you know, huge big garden, and lots of um, mango trees, and most of the time we are on um, the trees plucking <laughs> fruits. This is all that I knew. I was not interested in school studies. Never, not at all interested. I was just forced to go to school. The first three years, I attended the Besant Theosophical High School, which is connected with Kalakshetra. It was a big center then. Uh, it was used to be called Besant Cultural Center, BCC, which included, of course, uh, the, the famous Montessori training also. There was another uh, set up there. I was literally forced to join Besant School. So I would go in the mornings, attend, oh no, have early morning music class, then go to school, then rush back in the afternoon after school to Kalakshetra as a part-time student to do my Natya dance. So this was there for, for the first three years, the first three years. And um, then there came a time when I had to take a decision. They said, if you want to continue in Besant school, you can't be a part-time student. You have to, uh, um, you know, you have to be there full-time. Or if you want to do dance full time, you cannot go to school or something like that. So I decided immediately because I didn't want to <laughs> go to school. So everybody started, especially in my family, my sister, brother, everybody said, one day you're going to regret that you are not a, uh, you know, you didn't study or you're not a graduate. You couldn't even finish your school final. I said, I don't care. I will never ever repent this. Till today, I have not. I'm so happy for taking that decision. Crazy in a way, but then that's the way. <laughs> so um, after that, uh, there is no stopping. I started, I was just, I, I just enjoyed uh, being there, dancing, singing, traveling. And, and I was in the hostel, so it made it more interesting, you know, with all my classmates, everybody coming in and going. That was the life I never thought of anything more. It's such a joy there being there, what else? I hardly uh, saw my parents because they were still in Malaysia, Malaya then of course. Once in a while they will uh, try to come to India but not often like these days because the flights were not so often and uh, uh, or they would arrange for us to go by boat, by ship. Uh, there were two ships then. Uh, it would take 10 days to go to reach Penang and then go to um, Malaysia, to Kuala Lumpur um, and Singapore actually, you know, from here. So um, I used to look forward to those voyages because we had the whole ship was full of students from various institutions going to meet uh, their parents or people. And we used to have great time on board the ship singing, dancing, having parties, and sometimes the captain and the other officers will join us and we'll all have, we'll just merry make it so beautiful it used to be. Of course, I had my sister with me and brother also. Um, and uh, so, we, I've, and this was not happening every year. Once in three years, once in two years, sometimes, you know. Um, so I didn't miss my parents as such because I, I got used to the idea of, you know, being away from them and just being with other people around. I, I just enjoyed being wherever I was. And of course, I had my grandparents in Kerala where I visited during smaller vacations. But I still would like to come back to hostel and be with everybody and enjoy being, you know, doing whatever I did. And had lovely teachers there who taught me this great art and had a great opportunity to be part of all the productions.
കലാക്ഷേത്ര മൂത്ത് തിരുവാമ്യൂർ ഇൻ നയൻറ്റീൻ സിക്സ്റ്റി ത്രീ ലക്കലി ദ ഹാഡ് ദറ്റ് വെരി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ലാൻഡ് സംബഡി ദൊരസ്വാമി അയ്യർ വാസ് ദർ ദൊരസ്വാമി അയ്യർ ഹി വാസ് ദി മാൻ ഹൂ ബ്രോട്ട് ഓൾ ദി ലാൻഡ്സ് ടുഗെദർ ടേക്കിംഗ് ഫ്രോം ഫിഷർമാൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ഫിഷർമാൻ വില്ലേജ് ആൻഡ് നിയർ തിരുവാമ്യൂർ ടെമ്പിൾ so that's what shirugunidi we wanted so he has been slowly getting the land accumulated and um, joined and finally he got the almost 200 acres of land and started building uh, the small small cottages we used to be uh, traveling from adyar to tiruvannur to lay the roads every saturday and sunday we used to spend time there laying the roads planting trees the all the trees and the road that you see today is um, uh, built by us the children and the students at that time besant school students as well as kalachetra uh, students then we moved from um, uh, adyar civil society in 1963 with only five of us boys kalachetra boys pancha pandava myself balagopal janardanan kunjiraman sir and venkatachalapati we we first uh, moved and the, uh, by then there was a uh, built just one um, concrete building very well planned building for classrooms that we stayed there as well as it has been uh, i used as class also for us and then by year by year uh, all the other department moved to kalakshetra by then we had all cottages no concrete buildings and so they slowly they started building um, uh, staff quarters so teachers were also moved to the staff quarters so it became a nice ashram with all the great teachers staying there and the teachers in kalachetra the guru shishya parampara the association with such uh, great uh, musicians and uh, natya acharyas uh, uh, that that made what we are today that's the atmosphere uh, in kalachetra well our class that is a main class kathakali for us boys kathakali asan chandran chandupanikar was a, um, the a teacher you cannot find a teacher like that a guru but very very strict we were so disciplinarian <laughs> and sometimes we used also get beatings and all that and um, the other teachers like music music teachers like maisu astavacharya and um, bodhulok krishna shastri akari kudish they were all part of the whole system of kalachetra they were not just like musicians and separate they were all part of the whole learning process teaching process we used to play tambura for mysore was mysore was the teacher when he is composing music for the um, uh, ramayana. ramayana series and also we have attended uh, when he was teaching um, uh, music to ms subalakshmi we were playing tambura for the um, that kind of atmosphere and karakudu samasheyavar though he is a veena artist he would also involved in asking us what we learned in the natya class kathakali ivata kathakali will ask what did you learn today put he was a taala oriented yes terribly so we have to tell him what we learned and in taala all taala systems then if we, we go wrong he will say that is wrong so that is the kind of involvement every teacher had in kalachetra so we got all that discipline and rukmini devi was a fastidious disciplinarian and uh, time punctuality is her hallmark so we have to be also very punctual and um, very disciplined meaning it started with our slippers being kept in line when you enter class we with no slippers but everything has to be put outside these are the things that um, made us also to imbibe that kind of discipline devotion and dedication after 10 years i just took a gap of 3 3 years in between because my parents wanted me to come and live with them because i was away from them since i was 3 4 years old rupni devi was not too happy about it because i was doing a lot of a uh, lot of dancing a lot of good roles and so she said ah paathittu vandren appa amma paathittu edhukku anga poi ukkaranum illa na paathittu sikram vandu udrathe you know when kalakshetra visited 
Singapore for the um, cultural festival, Southeast Asian cultural festival. Um, I was a part of Kalakshetra uh, troupe because Atte said, since you are there already, you can join us. And I knew all the portions and the parts that I played in the dance dramas. I was also uh, part of the Indian Malaysian contingent. I was doing a uh, dance uh, uh, with a Malay song on flowers and beauty and all that. So, I was not sure whether Ate is going to be happy about my doing Bharatanatyam for a Malay song, you know th those those days one would never think of doing these things. So, I was only hoping that Ate will not come to know about this, but one day it so happened in one particular performance where we were sharing different stages at the same time. After uh, Indian performance came Malaysian Indian, Malaysian performance where I did this role, I had to do. I was so scared and Ate decided to sit there and watch that performance. I was so scared and then uh, I did it finally of course and then when we came back uh, to the university hostel where we stayed, uh, Ate kind of called me out and then she said, I want to talk to you Shanta. I was so scared, I thought she's going to really you know okay. say something terrible Why? to me ah, and I went with my friend along with my friend for support. You know what she said? She said, What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? How do you Malay. She was talking about the Malay song. She was talking about the Malay song. She was talking about the Malay song. What I am saying is that she was open to uh, different ways of coming out with your um, you know, artistic uh, endeavor. And she appreciated in with the large heart like that. So I've always seen her very open to these things. Ate was actually planning to go to Australia then for again for a festival representing India. She wrote to me, said, uh, "I'm going to please come and join me." And right at that moment, I you know I just came and went to Australia, traveled for four months, four months, nook and corner of Australia. We learnt a lot, you know, traveling. Uh, on Sundays, we will have two shows, one uh, uh, for school children uh, in the matinee and night for um, the rest of, uh, you know, at the theatre, wherever we are. It was all small, small villages. They will say, oh, there are about 100 people in this village. That's all. Because it's, it's, it was kind of a growing country at that moment. That was all fun. I still remember, this is something funny, said, uh, so they will ask us, you came to die? They will say, to die? No, we came today. We didn't come to die. <laughs> you want to, uh, where can we wash our f face? And say, you wash your face in the bison. We didn't understand. This took a long time for us to understand. You wash your face in the bison. It so happened that uh, from Singapore to Perth, when we were flying, uh, when they had announced, in, after getting into the flight before takeoff, they would announce the name of the captain. And then they said, Captain C.P. Narayanan is in charge. Oh, I just got up and said, that's my uncle, my own uncle. So I was so thrilled. And because I have all these Kalakshatra troop around me and Rupani Amma is sitting there and my uncle is going to pilot. So I was so thrilled and I sent word through uh, the hostess and, uh, uh, and he came out and he was so happy and he said. Later on of course um, after we took off he came and met Ate and one by one he took all of us into the cockpit. Those days we never had the problem of security. So he took us all into the cockpit and made us see and you know gave us more sweets and stuff like that. Oh, I was so proud at that moment, you know. So Ate would once in a while go to a supermarket, a small ones those days, we never had a big market. So she will uh, pick uh, Indonesian sambal which she was very fond of because she had traveled a lot and of course she is a vegetarian but she loves you know exotic nice different kinds of food, she's tasted a lot. Um, so she got this and she knew I was from Malaysia, so I would like it. So, Shanta, then we'll go and take this and then 
mix it with rice and eat. So all these little uh, times that we shared with Atte, she would be like a little child, like one among us. And she traveled with us in the same bus for two months, continuously in the same month, uh, bus, visiting several little, little, little townships. Living with Atte, taking care of her, um, and you have to keep changing the programs according to what was available in wherever we went. So those were uh, wonderful times we had with Atte. first girl I met in Kalashatra is Shanta, so that is the beginning. And then what happened? You can tell. <laughs> it was not like love at first sight. I was too young to understand all those feelings. But then I think he was interested in me because I could sense that. And because I had all my friends around who will also, you know, when you are young, you know, they will also come and slowly tell me, you know, oh, Dhananjan wants to talk to you, you're not looking at him, why, why are you not replying, why are you not talking to him? Everything happened like, just like that because we see each other every day, we act together and there were times when we had to do Sita and Rama in Sita Swayambaram and after breaking the bow, you know, um, he holds her hand and I'll, he'll be holding my hand, I'll be trembling like this because I was so scared, you know, those days we didn't, we were not so bold. Girls were very <laughs> shy and timid uh, because they didn't want people to talk about, you know, oh, Shanta was looking at Dhananjay and I was feeling so bad. If someone says that to me, how will I take it? So I, I almost tried to avoid uh, doing those roles just to avoid, you know, um, this kind of um, accusation if, if it is there. I think at one point of time he thought that I'm not serious, I'm not going to because I'm, I'm from a village and I'm not so well to do. I don't think she'll be interested in me. And also there were other people who would say this, oh, she'll go back to Malaysia and you know, get married. I don't think uh, she'll be allowed to you know, marry him. You know how. <laughs> but in my own heart, in my heart of hearts, I, I was only thinking of him. I, I was so strong that this is the person for me, for my life, for my entire life, which I didn't tell him. Also, till the last moment, I didn't tell him. Finally, after almost three years, by then, my parents also came to know about Dhananjayan. And uh, they said, OK, because they, they never said no. They just wanted me to be strong enough to say, yes, I can do this. You know, this is my life. I can take it up. So the moment I, uh, I said that, they said, OK, now go ahead. I actually wanted him to come uh, to Malaya. Uh, that would have been great. I could have organized all that. But then I thought he will never be happy outside Kalakshetra. He is, he is Kalakshetra. He is part of Kalakshetra. So I said, it's best I go there. So after finishing my three years with my parents, I went back. And then we decided, everything was decided. My parents said, uh, you know, they fixed a date, 24th August, in Guru Ayur. So simple marriage. Very simple Very marriage. Simple. After that, you know, rest is history. <laughs> Never thought we would, I would leave Kalakshetra, but uh, circumstances uh, when we st we also st started growing and um, our family started growing, and we wanted to have some more uh, the, um, better emolument, better life. I was representing the other staff members, but uh, unfortunately they were all afraid of Atte and Sankraman and the system. So they even, they never open their mouth. So I have to represent. When I represented, but I was branded as a trade union. 
So, that of course, upset me also because I was fighting um, representing, it is not fighting. Finally, they asked also that Dhananjayan is fighting, it was just not fight, it is very cordial um, talk and cordially expressing our concern for the other people. So, when they branded me as a trade union and traitor, a traitor and all <laughs> that, then I thought that is not correct because my intention was not there. Uh, like that. All the staff members need to be remunerated a little more because they are, uh, everybody was getting their family, one family or the uh, home family. I had two families to look after, that is a matter. Um, then better facilities, uh, in a sense we were charging and they were charging us the, for the quarters and they, when the other staff members were asked separately, they all denied, they, they all put blame on me. So, I became a scapegoat, scapegoat. and then, I, <laughs> then one day I had an argument with Atte and Shankar Menon and then we uh, said if we do not give that facilities, what will you do? And I said, if everybody know they do not want anything, I will walk off. That is how I had, uh, the thought of leaving Kalakshetra came into my mind. So, I left. I resigned. After I resigned, I worked there for almost um, three months. And during the three months, they, they did not pay me any, at all anything. I had to work full, you know, completely free. So, it was very hard for me to maintain family when I decided to leave Kalakshetra, I started taking small, just one tuition Bharatanatyam outside, outside Kalakshetra. I was staying there because she, she is still a staff member, so we were, I was able to stay there. So, I used to go outside, that is the first only time I went to somebody's house and took tuitions to support my T -T family. And then I got a job in TT, Krishnamacharyan company, TTK. A clerical job. I, clerical, I mean, uh, I was the secretary to the chairman, Mr. Narasimhan. By then, I had uh, passed my uh, BA economics privately because everybody encouraged, and some of the um, well wishers asked me to um, study academically also, not just depend upon Natyam uh, as a um, career. So, they wanted me to study. So, that uh, helped me to. Um, acquire uh, a BA degree economics. At that time, when I was studying very vehemently, uh, even Kalashatra did not support me at all. They always um, taunted me for uh, appearing for examination. Even Atte said, uh, why, are you, why do you want to um, um, take a degree? Because I, I am an eight, um, eighth standard rock dropout. I am, I, am, I am surviving, so why do you want so? I on my own I wanted to acquire some. That uh, came in handy for me to get, when I left Kalachetra that was uh, giving me a, a small salary that uh, supported my life. Then during the, uh, that period, I left Kalachetra and then uh, Santa's parents were also staying with us. They wanted a better accommodation, so the, we shifted from Kalachetra campus to Shastri Nagar. Uh, they rented a, a better house there and so um, came out. There I had a th small thatched cottage upstairs and then I started taking class. She was not able to take class because Rukmini did and did not allow her to because she is still a staff member. So, with the uh, cottage um, with one student there, I started early morning I will take classes and then go rush to the office. And the evening, I will again come back by bus and uh, rush to uh, have the uh, evening classes. By then, slowly in Shastri Nagar uh, residency, people came to know about our coming out of Kalachetra. So, they all wanted to send their children. So, slowly from 1 to 2 to 10, 20, like that, it started giving. No well, uh, well wishes or um, affluent people supporting me and all that. So, I had to work on my own. Luckily, because of the Kalachetra Moor, uh, people recognized me, so they started giving me news. So, it started performing in hotels, and at that time, hotels and marriages, conferences, and all that, 
that was another um, accusation they everybody put on me because after leaving Kalashetra, I am diluting myself, my style and all that, um, dancing in such uh, public areas and Kalashetra never used to do that. But I used to argue this, if, if MS Subhalashmi can sing in a marriage, why not Dhanajin also dance in the marriage halls? That's what my dying word. Then they kept, kept their mouth shut. So we used to um, um, perform in marriage halls. The Sabhas never encouraged, uh, the organized, cultural organizations never encouraged a male dancer at that time. So I had to, as a lone male dancer at that time, I want to, doing Bharatanatyam. There was no Bharatanatyam male dancers at that time. I had written to government organizations, Sangeet Academy and some other cultural organizations saying, I want to come out and um, uh, establish. Then I promptly got some uh, letters, especially I would, I, would, I would like to mention, this is Mohan letters. Mohan Kokar is a very great art, uh, art connoisseur and art um, promoter, Sangeet Academy secretary. He promptly wrote me a, a, a letter in the inland letter those days. There is no life for man dancers outside Kalakshetra. So I thought, no, that is not right. I think I, can, I have to take it, uh, to take it as a challenge and see that man can survive with the Bharatanatyam solo dancing. That is why it, then it was become a mission for me to take. It's then how to break the ice from the um, cultural organizations? Very difficult. Uh, at that time. And there was uh, some secretaries uh, saying, who will watch you dance? That is another uh, challenge I had to face. And I started composing items mainly for uh, male-oriented items. I got a lot of songs and that, that clicked. And the first opening um, chance was given by Narada Gan Sabha, Krishna Swami. He goes through one of our friends, um, R.K. Pillai. He was also one of the trustees of Narada Gan Sabha. So that was a big break. Then all the Sabhas started opening up because I had a raving review of uh, male dancing. Uh, so everybody started, oh, oh, male can also be uh, educative, enlightened and entertain. A guy can entertain in, with the uh, male. Uh, body and male concept, concept of program is male concept. Then this when the, she started uh, joining me in certain items, suddenly there was a reprimand from Kalakshetra Rukuni Devi. She was still working there. She said, you cannot dance with your husband. How can you, you are a Kalakshetra staff. Kalakshetra staff should not come to uh, go out, do outside, only they can. So she came one, one evening crying, saying, How can they say like that? Then said, You resign. resign. That's the best option. So she also resigned and we started duo performances. <laughs> Yahi Madhav, Yahi Keshav, Mavat Kaitav, Vadam. Tamanu Sarab, Sarasiru Halochan, Yatav Haradi Vishad. And that clicked very well. Everywhere it clicked very well because she was representing Lassia mode, I was representing Tandava mode. So people liked it. Naturally, we started establishing ourselves as duo Bharatanatyam couple. That is the success story of Bharatanatyam. Then, by then, Bharatakalanjali has started um, growing and uh, with the uh, children we are training, we started doing group variety programs. The first great hit was our Aikya Bharatam, United India. People started calling us for all conferences, medical conferences, science conferences, engineering conferences. So we started doing conferences and marriage um, uh, entertainment. And we started getting good uh, remuneration. So that is how 
we slowly build up Bharata Kalanjali and luckily I had a lot of good, very excellent uh, students and the, the parents were very confident in us, so they left the children to us, though they also had a kind of a gurukulam with us. And then we um, uh, suddenly we got an invitation from uh, Malaysia Singapore Airlines. One of my friends, close friends, was manager uh, at that time, so they were exchanging the cultural exchange program in uh, commemorating the inauguration of the Malaysia Singapore Airlines between India, Madras and uh, Malaysia, uh, Singapore. We travelled Southeast Asian countries and that was a very big hit and it, uh, it brought us a lot of money. Suddenly in 1973, uh, we got an invitation from nowhere, uh, from Theatre de la Ville in Paris. It's a very big institution. The Theatre de la Ville is um, the prime uh, theatre in France. There was a big India festival at that time. Big and break. artists like Birju Maharaj, um, what's his name? Sivakumar Sarma, Chaurasya. Sarma, Chaurasya, they were all part of it. Yes. So along with them, we were also there. Uh, Maya the Rao. Maya the Rao. Even Alar Mail Valley, she was a young girl. She was, she got a special chance to be part of the thing. She was about 16 years old at that time. Out of that uh, one month program in Paris, um, the Theatre de Laval, one month, every day. Every day. And Saturday we had uh, two shows. It's like that. Mm. And it was such a big experience. We produced uh, Jungle Book in London under the banner, under the sponsorship of the Arts Council. That happened because, of course, my our very prime student at that time, Pushkala Gopal, was the director of the Academy of Indian, uh, Indian, Indian Dance. Dance. So she invited us and uh, asked us what can we do. Then I proposed. It should be an, um, a neutral story, it's not Krishna Rama story, some neutral story which should be common to both our countries. So, I suggested uh, that we can try Jungle Book. Jungle Book, Yena, at that time, the Hollywood um, has produced the animation Jungle Book at that time. It was uh, just released. So, that was very popular. So, why not we take that subject as in a how can we do it in Natyam? That was the first question everybody asked. I said, don't worry, I will do it. Those times we used to travel a lot to America for our programs as well as camp and all that. So on the way, we will drop in London and have discussions. So in almost two years, we have been discussing. And they wanted to involve uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar to do the music. And uh, people were wondering, without lyrics, uh, you know, what will be the release? Um, lyrics in English? or Tamil or Samskutam or what I said, we will do with music, just music, like ballet, ballet they, move, they don't have lyrics, so we do like that. Can we do like that? That is the question. Paradhanatyam is uh, lyric oriented, we started working on it and then Pandit Ravi Shankar was to do the music first. Then that was another great idea and great opportunity for us to work, but unfortunately, he at that time he was very busy travelling around the world, he said, I can't do it, but I would like to, my session, um, Pandit Vijay Raghav Rao to do it, he will do a better job, that's what he said. <laughs> that's, uh, that is how Panditji is, he's very magnanimous in his approach and attitude. Graceful, to really. So, in the same hall that Pandit Vijay Rao sat and wrote the, right there, he sat and wrote the music. He was also a dancer, he had learned dancing in Kalakshetra, I believe, when he was young. So he had the rhythm in him, so the moment you did some dance movement, he knows it, he just takes, oh, one ta te te te, one te te te, okay, te 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 te, he'll start writing. Fantastic. Yeah, that verse. is amazing, he's an amazing child. Amazing so, person. And this jungle book, so it was so successful, 
three round of touring of uh, three seasons. Season, said, three yeah. seasons. We performed almost 150 shows of Jungle Book in uh, London, and that became a big uh, ice break because then only people started realizing that our system of Dinatyam can be employed to make a bigger theatrical productions. Uma Ganeshan, who started this uh, Cleveland Cultural Association Alliance. with the same idea of uh, saying that Indian theatrical productions must be made popular in USA. So, uh, she was instrumental in collaborating with the, the Ohio. Ohio Ballet Theatre and the um, Ohio University. Three. So, it, it was called Tri-C. With that, with that uh, what to do again? the theme. Then again I suggested the, the Jungle Book was uh, very successful in London, same thing we can do. But they had a, in the Ohio Ballet Company, there is a um, very um, fastidious and fastidiously traditional uh, ballet director. director. Uh, after starting to work on um, Jungle Book, this gentleman is a lover of animals, Heinz Paul. So he said, I've heard so much about the cows in India. Uh, I, I would certainly love to visit the place. And just to know the culture, he wanted to come here. He came here to the, this building and he worked with our students here. He just taught them some movements and he sat and watched. We took him to even uh, um, the, for a performance, performance, uh, in performance. The and uh, Kalachar Bharat and Kalachar and, Kalachar Kalachar and then um, you know after all that when he came back and uh, he spoke to uh, the ballet company and his people his students they said the best thing and we had a press conference that's when he said you know the best moment for me is when I saw in India there is a cow sitting right in the middle of the uh, road and all the cars and cycles and everything, scooters, just go around him. You they just the avoid. He is so calm there, sitting there. And none, he is not perturbed by this. And they also give him a place to sit. So for, the, for him, this was like a godsend and thing. Then, so and nice. then we, st we did, uh, did the choreography, complete choreography, with the basic uh, instrument of um, uh, drumming and some piano. piano. Um, Panditji was there, so we stayed there for two months, uh, all of us together. He would compose music there in a, uh, 24 hours, so we had to be with him even all <laughs> night. He'll come we back at night and he'll start to write, you know, or he'll make note of everything while we uh, practice. The note then is still with start. us. And then oh. he'll finish, he'll Notation. say, come, I've done this, sit, listen to this. How about, is it okay? Do you you, you, you feel it's alright, you know, like that he will share 
all his music oh, wonderful it was and we learned so much from him After that, of course, that gave an impetus, a path breaking. Everybody started doing productions. Pandit Ravi Shankar's magnum opus production, Ghanasyam, is another um, great episode. I should say it's uh, is like a, another Mahabharatam. We put it in short. In 1976, when Ravi Shankar met us uh, the backstage green room in Elizabeth Hall, London, said, "I want to work with you." It was a big surprise for him because by working with Pandit Ravi Shankar is something which is uh, the, the greatest thing happened in our life. And said, "A contemporary story, a modern story, probably happened a hundred years ago." And uh, can you guess? And I said, no, we can't guess. Panditji, you say. Then he said, it is going to be Ghanasyam. Then it must be Krishna. No, Krishna. This is an artist. Ghanasyam is the name of an artist. So, it's about exhaustism, drug abuse. Exhaustism in a drug abuse. That the message he wanted to tell us drug kills you. That's the message. How we said, that's wonderful. It's a modern, uh, at that time it was rampant, the drug abuse is rampant everywhere. So to give a message. So we started working on that and um, believe it or not, he had the galaxy of the greatest of musicians like um, Ashid Deshai, uh, Ronu Majundar and um, Ramesh Mishra, Chayanai, Mohan Veena. Uh, Mohan Veena. Visham, Visham Sarangi, Mohan Bhatt. Yeah. And it was commissioned by um, Birmingham. Birmingham Touring Opera House, London. So we worked and um, he started composing. And then for the, his music, we, we started uh, choreographing. And we were two characters that is, uh, one is a Kathak family, another is Bharatanatyam family. Bharatanatyam family, we two. Kathak family, and Durga Lal and uh, his, uh, his students. Uh, students. So that is two companies, Bharatakalanjali and Durga Lal company. We came together and of course, um, uh, again, there also our uh, association and Panditji's magnanimity, everything combined, we were able to work coordinately. There was no um, or, uh, superiority complex or uh, inferiority complex. It took almost, almost two years to complete, to complete it. First music, uh, first theme and then uh, musical and then we had to rehearse and again we had to go to, the, do, to um, um, London, Birmingham and stay there for um, two months. All these musicians mm -hmm. came there and lived, we we lived in a huge big you know, home and then we all shared the same building. And Every, every single day, day oh, everybody was there to rehearse. That was... Uh, that, that is professional. You know, once you do it, it that's morning it. Morning, we all go in a bus. Panditji also will come with us in the same bus. And there was a theatre, the Birmingham Opera Theatre. It was given to us for rehearsals. Every day, we will work from 9 to 6. In between, we'll have one, well, one lunch. hour break for lunch, lunch break. So, P Panditji will be there throughout. See, Panditji uh, himself has been a student of dance you know, in his brother's troop. So, he knows all about movement and positions and all that. So, sometimes he'll just get up and show. And show. Do like this, do like this, he'll come up. It was really wonderful. George Harrison, of well, course, Beatles. Well, Beatles. He was they there. He yeah. used to come for come rehearsals, for rehearsals every day. And, and he recorded something with our musicians and all. The entire semester was at sea. That's why it's called semester at sea. So the, the entire boat is filled with uh, 
students. So they had several professors uh, who would join them uh, at In different ports. During sailing, they will have their academic courses. But when they hunger at uh, a port, they will come, uh, come out and travel that Sightsee. country, sightseeing as a cultural exposition. So from that particular port, one great um, professor or uh, artist will join them for the next uh, Until the uh, next travel. port. So during traveling, we have to uh, tell them what the other, the, our country is. So when we were commissioned, we, we joined them in Hong Kong first time, we, when the four times we went. Uh, we joined that um, port. Uh, from there to traveling to the to Madras, during that period, we have to take classes. Another interesting thing was, I, uh, during that, we had, had um, this um, New York State Education Department inviting us in 76. So we used to travel all around uni New York, uh, Nukan corner of New York State, and lecture day, lecture demonstration. At that time, the, the American children did not know where India, India was. India was, they hardly knew. They, they didn't know that there is a country like India, but we had to educate them. But during this voyage, the education, there were a couple of students, college students, who had attended our uh, um, the lecture Workshop. demonstrations in their colleges and the schools. So they said, you came that uh, some time back and you did this and you did this, isn't it? Yes, yes we, we did it <laughs> at that school and that was very uh, interesting. So we met a lot of scientists in that ship. Scientists, educationists, artists. Politicians. Uh, they're all also. built in the, in the ship. So we all used to have discussions and that was very, very interesting. Very interesting very, contacting and uh, having connection with such people and one such professor already invited us after all that into Hawaii, his, his university. His and we went all the way to Hawaii. To Hawaii, invited and us. They, they were opening uh, um, Indian, in, uh, the Indian section of the museum. All these are great memories, you know, etched forever. Bhaskara was started with the lofty ideals and ideas. Wanted to create another Kalakshetra in Kerala because uh, usually at that time a lot of uh, Keralites were coming to Kalakshetra and they were all coming from very not affluent families but uh, very poor, uh, poor or middle class families to make a career in Natyam. After a lot of um, search and researches, we located a very beautiful place. Uh, then we created that place uh, into a beautiful Vrindavanam. All that we did and um, started very beautiful buildings, uh, the traditional Kerala type of uh, Thai, Nalgat uh, Vida and all that. Uh, it was a center for uh, tourism, like we built it up very beautifully and uh, ran it for uh, almost 10 years. We brought to the village electricity, we brought to the village um, uh, uh, paved roads and all that. And there was a small dilapidated Shiva temple called Kailasanada. Dilapidated, there was no puja, there was only one um, evening somebody will come and light the lamp, that's all. So that, uh, that was okay. And there was uh, another um, very beautiful uh, naturally made tank also. I thought this is a very nice place. So we made it all that and the buildings came and we started, classes started and we used to have uh, 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 annual uh, camps for uh, other students. So it was very successfully we ran it and then the villagers came into on the arena asking for the land back which went into the court and they tried to cheat us with uh, um, for, uh, for, um, forged uh, documents and things like that. 
So fighting a court case in Kerala is a very, very treacherous thing. So I had to go there every month to the court, pay fees to the lawyers and all that. And in, the, in between, I entrusted the whole thing to another person we, whom we thought he she, he will be of help. But he also joined with the villagers and tried to take it over. The case was uh, uh, drawn almost for seven years. And finally, it came in favor of us. By then, I was exhausted. Then I said, this is not... Uh, we thought of doing something for the state, and uh, my place, village, but the village, the people didn't want it. So I uh, sold it to... Uh, some uh, college, educational college. And now they are running uh, an MBA college. That's the short story of Bhaskara's failure. Otherwise, it would have been a very monumental. Even now, it's a tourist place because the buildings are so beautifully built. First, I have to say, I was uh, invited by Rajiv Menon to do a, uh, an ad for um, yeah. Narrow Lack Paint. Uh, that was shot in Kerala, in Mohanlal's uh, house. In one fine day, my son Satyajit got a call and then through his friend, in, uh, they said, will your uh, parents be interested to do this bit uh, for Vodafone? So he asked us, is it fine? I said, okay. No. We thought we were going to just sit like this and have something to say Some and something shoot. about for, you know, word of phone. Holding, holding the pack. We didn't know anything. Else so once uh, they tested us and they sent all the, uh, the, the details to Bombay, uh, to the company and the director saw us and suddenly they said, tomorrow we are leaving, no, day after tomorrow, the day after that, he said, we are going to Goa. You are, select, you are there. So you have to come to Goa. So we were lost. We said, Goa? Suddenly for this. So that it's, everything happened just like that. And so there we are in Goa. And we were also, I said, what do we do now? How, what, what are we supposed to do? We have no idea. We didn't know what to do. So the director will say, uh, no, no, no. You just, you just have to uh, shout and then run and do whatever. You know, just make it natural. So <laughs> we just did it. And uh, he will say, fine, this is good. Yeah, the, the way they came up with this idea and then did the shot in no time, you know, like I was surprised and I was watching, you know, there are little, little things that is so important in a uh, picturization, you know, that we don't realize when you say a picture movie. There was a time when uh, there was a uh, scene in a tattoo house. I was doing a um, um, scene where I'm talking to my uh, granddaughter through the phone and, and so he's sitting there and doing his tattoo with a lady there so I'm just and then after that so a uh, couple of times we had to have the shot so uh, the just before starting the director came in I had uh, these bangles here it was like this he came and just moved it here this much I said why because the last shot the continuity it was like this it was not like this it was like this so that little bit of uh, uh, detail was so important. I realized, you know, how much there is, so much there is to learn from all these people who make these movies. We go to a movie house, you sit and watch and say, nallave illa. even the nallave illa, you know, how much of work they would have gone through, you know. That was a lesson for us. And, and of course, the paragliding was another thing and then, dancing, diving on board the ship. Oh God, <laughs> there was this choreographer who came from Bombay all the way. He and his assistant came to teach us this diving thing. <laughs> it was so funny. So we did it, but uh, finally I think we did our own diving. <laughs> uh, and the paragliding was something that just happened like that. So he said, uh, uh, they'll come and pull you, that's all. So the, the first time he said, let's do what they're going to do. So we had one rehearsal. Second time they literally pulled me up and I was up there, just this height. And 
everything was so natural and he said fine this is done we have done the shot, done shot. Done. <laughs> and of course later on when it was pulled up it was uh, um, a duke no, which no, took yes. when, when they go up then we went to um, Istanbul. What is Istanbul for a couple of shots there which was also very interesting uh, very creative very very creative and everything was done uh, in no time. The lesson for us is how the film unit, film directors and the technicians are very creative. On the spot they decide and the director Prakash Varma was, uh, he was the fantastic. He, was, he just, he, 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 he just he made us feel us so final. much at home and he just said this, this is this is it. You do what you feel like doing. If there is anything, I let you know. And there was this beautiful rapport between us. You know, many many advertisement come came like um, La Vista Coffee. Oh, that's a, that's a very beautifully done. Jensen and Nicholson. Jensen and Nicholson paint. That's, that's nice uh, with the children and all that. Tanish, that was another very very nicely check. And then uh, but now recently we did with um, Raji Menon. Shanta was in the Navarasa Navarasa Lana Navaratan Oil Navaratan Oil Chikundi Bamma Idi Navaratna Oil Magic Oh hello No no it's cool baby Cool baby They just call us thinking that we are models some of the casting directors then uh, once up uh, uh, last week somebody called from Bombay and uh, uh, said uh, can you come to Bombay uh, you some uh, some product we have to I I see I bank I see I bank. see I see yes and uh, then I stopped and said do you know uh, do you know who are we you are talking to and then, yes uh, you have come in Moda Vodafone <laughs> I said that is okay but I'm not a model the, you are thinking oh you're not a model <laughs> no, I am not a model. I am a classical dancer, Bharatanatyam dancer. I no, had to no, say, no, because so many calls coming, so I had to say that. They didn't know that we are Bharatanatyam artists. Mm -hmm. 1982. Can't see on the, so, that was the beginning of uh, Alay Raja also. Yeah. We, In fact, yeah. I was asked to do Nandanar Charitam. Because of those days, I was when I was performing, I was doing Nandana Charitam. The story was something also related to Nandana the Charitam. The theme. The theme. We did Nandana Charitam, selecting songs from uh, Paraya Nandana, AVM Nandana. Same song we kept. Orchestration was done by uh, uh, Raja. For me, it was there was about 15 days of shooting, uh, doing Nandana Charitam solo and uh, Cholamandal Artist Village. And it was shot, um, the cameraman was Shomendra uh, Rai, no? Shomendra Rai, uh, number Satyajit Rai's Rai's cameraman. He, he came here and worked with me, as we worked together, seeing me, my uh, performance uh, rehearsal every day, 15 days. <laughs> I did one for Rajiv uh, Menon um, in Sarvam Thalamayam, in which my role is small, but it was interesting again because towards the end I have a punch dialogue to say, which I enjoyed so much. The Gadam Gandira Vashkrava, Palatina, Ninga Valuku, Rupati Mela Poi, Vashiche, Ungloda Vidwatan Atre. Ama, yeah. 
அது தாளம் காமிக்கிறதுக்கு கணக்கிலேயும் லயத்திலேயும் யார் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட்டு யார் ராஷா இது காமிக்கிறதுக்காக வாசிக்கிறேன் அப்போ அதுவும் போட்டி தானே அந்த போட்டி டிவியில் வரப்படாதா அந்த சங்கீதம் எல்லாருக்கும் போய் சேரும் இல்லையோ இது சங்கீதத்தை பற்றி உனக்கு என்ன தெரியும் நீங்கள் கொண்டும் தெரியாதுண்ணா ஏதோ இந்த காலத்துக்கு தகுந்த மாதிரி கொஞ்சம் மாறலாமே நான் சொன்னேன் உனக்கு பயம் வயசான காலத்தில் இந்த வீட்டில் தனியாக உட்கார போகிறதுனால பயம் எனக்கு ஒரு பயமும் கிடையாது நான் ஒரு முதியோர் இலக்கு தான் போகிறேன் ஆனால் உங்கள் சங்கீத சொத்தை யார் கொடுக்க போகிறேன் பாலன் <laughs> 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 So I, I'm doing quite a strong character in that. I enjoyed working with him and uh, it was very, very strong and I hope it will click well and looking forward to it. very interesting that we had the opportunity to um, delve into different kinds of uh, media that is uh, cinema advertisement and natya natyam of course we are uh, groomed into that and we know that the discipline the body discipline mental discipline and uh, the spiritual discipline is there and so we know that um, uh, we have to precisely Uh, understand the uh, movement expressions music everything is combined in that the sangeetam sahityam and the natyam everything we have to be thorough with it then only we can uh, be successful performance on the stage so for that we have to have the aesthetics feelings and um, uh, read a lot of stories and all that that is uh, different so since we are we have gone through these uh, disciplines it, do, it was not very difficult for us to choose any other some other medium like cinema even the shots are uh, in different angles same thing we have to repeat 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 but whereas in natyam we don't need to on the stage we do only once but here we have to repeat and also keep the same uh, expression and same intonations etc same then only they can edit it and put it into so that's a very challenging job and uh, initially we had little uh, problem and but we got over it because of the discipline that we had in that uh, and cinema of course um, uh, we don't prepare anything we go on the spot and then we have to emote we we don't have a rehearsal or and for natya we had the rehearsals earlier and we should know what we are going to do here in cinema we don't know what we are going to do only when director say at that moment we have to react and do so there is a vast difference for to be successful in cinema we have to be more alert with the director who is directing that is the difference and when it comes to um, ad also it's also the ad is seen several times whereas in, in cinema they only see one time so there is there is a slight lapse in that it doesn't matter but in ad we learn that we have to be very precise because it is being uh, repeatedly seen by the audience and they can pick up the wrong things and uh, comment yeah cinema. i feel you know in ad Uh, films and uh, when you're doing um, uh, ad movies so he, the message is very short like within one second two seconds you have to convey the message as far as I'm concerned you know acting um, I love acting I like to emote um, only thing is I tend to 
use my eyebrows and eyes a little more than normal, you know. That's because of my practice in RTI things. So once in a while, uh, the director will remind me, Amma, kunjum puruo, avla atta dingo. Ella kandu kunjum torongo, ella kandu avla torka dingo. So that's, uh, then I used to think, you know, why is he saying this? Oh, then I have to tone down because I'm uh, doing Natyam, you exaggerate on stage, you need to. You know, that's the way mm. you decide. Bright. But do come now. What do you say wrong? It is normal, I don't like to exaggerate. So then I was thinking, yes, now I know, you know. So it was uh, quite a challenge to, you, you have to think about it. There's so much of thinking that happens, you know. Yeah, wonderful. There's a lot of challenge, a lot of challenge. And if you're successful, that's great. I printed leaflets 30, uh, 30, 40 years ago when I started living in this colony. Printed myself, sending my money. I printed uh, leaflets and distributed to all the houses and uh, not to litter and put it in the right place and all that. And I have returned to all the government officials and a lot of letters to the editor I have uh, published on uh, social issues, economic issues, political issues, including linking Ganga uh, with Kaveri. If you I have a book published and they write letters to the editor, 108 letters to the editor. If at all today, they, all the flights are uh, non-smoking, it is, I have a big uh, role to play, uh, I had a big role to play in it because it started with Air Lanka. At that time it was Air Ceylon, I think. We used to travel a lot. So I wrote to the management saying uh, smoking should be prohibited in the flight. And promptly I got the reply. When I returned home, I got a reply from the management that yes, we are going to stop. So did, they did stop. That was a, a big success. Uh, that encouraged me to write to all our uh, other our departments. The flight thing happened with uh, Lufthansa. I used to travel to in Lufthansa a lot, through, uh, traveling through um, Frankfurt. And uh, those days, uh, it was smoking was allowed in the lounge. Then when I wrote to the management, I promptly got a reply saying uh, that we are, we are allocating a one corner for smoking. Each time when I travel, I check and then I saw the improvement in every, every airport. And that they, again, that is a, they have a allocated room, smoking room now. And that also I protested saying, even that must be avoided. Now I think most of the airports and uh, airports as well as airlines, they have stopped uh, smoking. When we travel in third class, uh, the, the, um, the sleeper class, uh, many people put litter uh, on the ground. They don't, go, don't take the trouble of going to the uh, litter box. So every time I see something, I pick it up and I go to the end. Then they will understand. It has happened. So one, once when we were traveling from Koriko to Chennai, a group of police people were traveling with us in the same compartment. They were littering in the uh, compartment. Then I went and picked up and put it in my hand and then, then they realized, sir, 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 don't do that. I said, no, no, you are, uh, you are, uh, you are immersed in your cons. Uh, conversation, you have put everything down, so I am picking it up. Then the, 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 the message is, so then they mm. apologized. So like that, the social work I uh, have done. There has been a lot of changes in every field of our life actually. Changes are imperative. And we had to take it uh, in the right uh, spirit when the changes come. So we sail with the waves. That's the, in the Natya field, a lot of changes have taken place. When we uh, joined, uh, came to Kalakshetra in 1953, it was very um, sober and just uh, Alaripu to uh, Tilana repertoire and uh, any, any long items and things like that. And we had a lot of time also. People also had a lot of time. So as time went along, 
the time factor of the view is also reduced and the time factor is, uh, of our um, learning also the process is also changed because when we were there our <coughs> practices were long hours for almost sometimes 18 hours I, I can say but now because of so many things contributing to the changes that is uh, transportation, timing, school education, all that. So there has been a lot, of, a lot of changes in that also. From three, three hours program it is reduced to two hours and then it reduced to one and a half hours. Now it is reduced to one hour and then now because of the pandemic and things like that it reduced to ten minutes like that and also. And uh, the program wise when it was uh, confined to certain norms like uh, Krishna Rama themes, Puranam and mythological themes and those items have gone and we are trying and try to do the environmental themes and uh, political themes, all that social themes has started introducing in our repertoire. Because of the technical facilities available they are, uh, they are concentrating more on the lighting and um, reducing the um, performance or the actual performance. <laughs> because we can't sometimes when you um, dim the light for mood light, then we can't see the mood, the expression <laughs> outside. So that, that is uh, also a change, but not a good change. We as I, I see it. But uh, to certain um, uh, choreographic uh, features, we need the lining of the body, to see the lining of body we can use the cut lights and uh, wet and lights and things like that. But judiciously we have to use it. So those changes are taking place and today publicity media is a big thing. Those days there was no publicity media. So that changes Word a lot. Uh, advertisement wise as well as uh, invitation wise, look at the uh, uh, or Arangetam invitation, it is so go gorgeous, they yeah, spend so much of money on, uh, <laughs> on that pr printing which is useless actually, people throw it out. But in those days, uh, it was nothing, no advertisement, it by word, word of mouth, the advertisement and people used to come also. In those days, there was no competitions. Now com a lot of competitive candidates are coming. Competitions are also taking place, but because of the supply is more than demand, a lot of unwanted competitions happening, undercutting somebody else's uh, uh, stage and things like that happening. So a lot of uh, those days um, uh, affluence was not there. It was very normal. Everybody was in the uh, one class, um, uh, middle class or upper middle class like that. But now, the wealth has, every parent is uh, in a very wealthy position, so they wanted to show off their uh, wealth and their affluency. One big uh, change, which is not for good uh, for the art is, now the youngsters, uh, they think that the Natya or Sangeetam can be used to promote themselves, their individuality, not the art. But in our time, it was not like that. We only concentrated on the art, perfection of the art, but we never thought of ourselves. Talent that touches the onlooker's heart is art. Art brings hearts together. That is the normal, um, uh, our uh, philosophy. So, we have to project our art. Art must be projected, but the art will project you. You, you, are, you have to wait for that. So, that means you have to concentrate, concentrate on your art as a profession deeply then automatically without much paraphernalia, without much publicity, without much ado, it, they, uh, uh, definitely we will reach a good standard or people will still start appreciating you and you will get, definitely get the chances.
there is something happening between the two of us. There's a lot of understanding, a uh, lot of acceptance. Live and let live, they say, you know, that kind of understanding is there always with us. And we are able to share that. And we understand each other so much. Uh, that's very important, I think, you know, to carry on a fulfilled, happy life. And also, you have to be careful about how you are going about what you feel, you know, to the next generation. My children, my grandchildren, my students here, they should all also accept our being together and carrying on this wonderful relationship that we have so that they will also enhance their quality of life. I would like that to happen to everybody. Um, of course, I said my strength is from there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we do, we do, we do agree to disagree sometimes, but it's not a major issue. There are some little things that we think, you know, differently, but those are all just, you know, nothing very serious, but mostly we agree. And we try to analyze a lot of things together uh, so that he understands my viewpoint, I understand his viewpoint. And there's always samadhana somewhere, you know. Never been a fight, fight, ne never. Uh, but it's nice to have your own opinion also, I think, you know. That's how you create, you become creative also. It's nice to uh, accept each other and enhance each other by, you know, by accepting each other. And uh, what do you need? If, if you are happy together, you take yourself to a higher plane. And this is what I'm expecting and continue <laughs> this for life after life after life. Thank you.